see if I can help out at all. So, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm uh, so far, our problems that we've been dealing with have been kind of simple. They've already been kind of solved on one side and really just needed to do some easy operations. Well, when I'm looking at something like this, um, we need to make sure, guys, whenever you're solving for an X or a Y or any kind of variable, the main important thing is you got to get them on the same side, right? So the first thing I see I'm going to have to do is I got to get my tangent of X, right? I'm trying to solve for tangent of X. I got to get those onto the same side. So I'm going to subtract the tan of x from this right side to get over here. So now I have 3 tangent cubed of x minus tangent of x equals 0. All right? So now when I'm looking into my uh, solving, one thing I notice is they both share a tangent of x so I can factor that out. And all this tangent cubed of x means Tangent squared of x equals tangent of x times tangent of x. So tangent cubed is going to just be another multiply by tangent x again. So what I can do is I can factor out a tangent x. So I factor out a tangent of x. I'm left with uh, 3 tan squared of x minus 1. <coughs> equals zero. Is everybody follow me? Okay. So now, since I've factored out my tangent of x, now what I have is a zero product property where I notice that I have two terms that are multiplied by each other to give me zero. Therefore, now I can rewrite this as tangent of x equals zero and three tan squared of x minus one equals zero. Okay. So now I need to think about, you know, when is tangent equal to zero? What, uh, what values is that going to be equal zero to? Um, so I take a look at my unit circle, and I notice that this is going to be equal to zero at 1 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. Why is it those two points? Because remember, it's y over x. You can't use these two points because then your x would be zero where you'd have two undefined points. So therefore I can say x is going to equal, well you have zero and pi. So these are, these are in relation of pi to each other. So I can just say pi n. And the other thing, I'm sorry, the other thing we noticed is this problem, they also said we have a restriction, right? Our answer has to be between zero and two pi, right? So I'm actually not going to and include that. We'll just say x equals 0 and x equals pi. Thank you. Pi. Uh, yeah. That means you can't add it because that's going over 2 pi. Oh. Uh, so, okay. I guess that makes sense. Okay. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, we'll get to the restraint. Yeah. Uh, the restraint was in the. Um, oh, okay. The restraint was in um, the restraint was in uh, in the directions. Oh. If you read the directions, it says the answer has to be between zero and two pi. Yeah. So um, now we've got to go and solve this one. So if I solve this one, I'll add the one to the other side. So I have three tangent square root of x equals positive one divided by three. I get tangent square root of x equals one-third. Whew. Got a lot going on, right? Now, I need to undo that tangent squared, so I need to square root. So I get tangent of x equals plus or minus, remember this equals square root of 1 over square root of 3, so that's going to be 1 over radical 3. Plus or minus, right? We took the square root. Now, I'm going to rationalize the top and the bottom. So my final answer is tangent of x equals plus or minus radical 3 over 3. Now I need to determine which point is radical 3 over 3, right? So I need to remember tangent of your theta angle equals y over your x. It's your tangent of any angle on your unit circle. We're going to have our y coordinate over our x coordinate. So I need to determine what coordinates 
give me uh, radical 3 over a 3, either plus or minus. Well, at this point, we have radical 3 over 1 half, right? And what you notice, um, I'm sorry, that's the other way around. Y is my X. So Y would be uh, my 1 half over radical 3 over 2. So yes, when I do have a pi over 6, which is um, radical 3 over 2 comma 1 half, that point does give me that point pi over 6 does give me radical 3 over 3. So therefore, I can now say my answer is x equals pi over 6, yeah, four then pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, then our answer down here, 6 pi over 6, so this one would be 7 pi over 6, and then we have our answer over here, which would be just short of 12 pi over 6, or 2 pi, so that's going to be 11 pi over 6. Yeah, that's why you can add the plus Right, and we're not adding the plus 2 pi or the 2 pi n or plus pi n because it only says we only want our answer between 0 and 2 pi. Okay? That's it. So here we have two answers for that and then our two answers for that. That's it. That's how you solve. Sweet.